Hi everybody, it's Nick just checking in. Um, this predominantly is about emotional load actually and um, the impact that absorbing emotions of us for ourselves and for others and for not giving ourselves permission to actually process them um, has, um, I believe, and a lot of the science is showing a direct impact on our physical as well as our mental and emotional health. And um, I think it's a massive, massive symptom that crops up in the menopause, which I think is both physiological, but also I think it's environmental. But before I get into that, I did have a comment the other day about the HRT implants. So I had my HRT implant last week. Um, I have noticed um, a slight improvement. It does take up to two weeks to work. Um, I had a comment about that not being as good to have an implant because um, it's not as easy to regulate the amount and that is absolutely true. Um, for me, I have to have the implant because I cannot tolerate normal HRT, whether it is via a gel or a cream or a patch or a tablet. Um, and the reason for that is I was on HRT for so long my body, uh, in particular my liver, got really clever and started to recognise that I was putting um, a, 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 a foreign substance into my body and rejected it. And what that meant is it um, got stuck in my liver and just went round and round and round and round. So it wasn't, it wasn't distributed to my body, so I wasn't getting any benefits from the HRT, but actually I was feeling nauseous and really quite poorly a lot of the time. And it's, um, there's a Latin name for it, but it's basically what happens when you take too many antibiotics, which is why they always say only take um, the antibiotics that you need, because eventually our body will get clever and go, aha, we're not going to let those and then they become less effective. So the reason um, I then went to my plan B, which was an HRT implant, is because it bypasses the liver. So therefore, I don't get the nausea with it. Although I would say since having my HRT implant last week, I have been far more sensitive hugely more sensitive um, to insulin and sugars. My appetite has, sorry, Panda! It's my um, rescue collie who thinks every single person that walked past my house is about to burgle us. So, um, yeah, I have been really sensitive. I've noticed the last week to um, my blood sugars and food. I've been far less hungry. Um, a lot of the sugar cravings, which were getting really bad before I had the implant, have re have have reduced. Um, and I am being very aware of what I'm putting in my body. I think there's several things going on, actually. Um, so just before I leave that, because, you know, insulin and estrogen are really... Uh, closely related in part of our end endocology system and um as my in, uh estrogen dips the ability for my insulin resistance to um take over be the predominant force in my body gets far higher uh which means i retain lots of fluid so um at the minute i am just taking some diuretics um as prescribed by my menopause consultant and I do have to have regular blood tests to make sure they're not harming me in other ways and I only take them I will literally take them just for a few days just to get rid of the excess fluid that's built up and I know when I built it because my ankles get swollen and so forth and but fluid can sit in your joints and that can actually be quite painful so a transitional period transitional period is is what I would say um but I do know that I overall feel better having the HRT implant um, what we are going to do is do more regular blood tests each month, actually, and probably look to do more frequent updates because I seem to be chewing through implants quite quickly. But the, the real thing I wanted to talk about was emotional load and how that affects um, certainly me. So I read a lot of a guy called Gabor Matty, who I really find very, very life changing. And he talks a lot about the fact about trauma um, and that, you know, we can have big traumas and small traumas, but effectively we're all the walking wounded and that there is a, in his mind, an indisputable link in his mind based on the research and the science. He's a palliative care doctor, actually, he's a physician, a US physician, um, that, you know, the mind, body and soul. And he's saying that effectively um, there are uh, a lot of things that can happen to us in terms of you know, repression of our authentic self. Um, repression of our feelings, being people pleasers, the emotional absorption 
of so much that goes on around us that can actually manifest themselves in physical illnesses. And his book, The Myth of Normal, is hugely informative in terms of, I guess, taking ownership of our own um, well-being. And he talks an awful lot about, um, you know, those things and trauma and what we can actually do to heal ourselves. And he you know, he talks about some really big statistics in there. You know, 80% of autoimmune um, diseases are suffered by women. And um, the debate around that is the... Um, and, and this really resonated, and this is what the heart of this vlog is about, is that women carry... Women generally, in particular, just generalisation, but generally carry an enormous emotional load, not just for themselves, but for everybody around them. And I noticed, um, I tried to observe that about myself and I noticed that really strongly today. So I often put things down to my anxiety or the menopause and kind of dismiss them. But I've been trying to sit with feelings of discomfort a little bit more and try and understand them and try and get to the heart of what's going on. So um, we have this ridiculously complex um, heating system, which quite frankly is just shit. It's Wi-Fi enabled. It's forever going wrong. It drives me mad. Uh, and I've obviously been getting um, the cottage where I live kind of ready for the winter. We live in a very old cottage, so there is actually quite a lot of stuff that we have to do to winterfy it um, and to make things work. And one of the things was I thought, right, I will um, switch the heating back on. It's in Wi-Fi enabled and um, it's all temperature controlled room by room. Theoretically, it never bloody works. It's not working. And this morning, I just could not, for love nor money. Well, actually, that's not true. The last three days, I've been trying to get it to work and I haven't managed it. And this morning, I was getting so anxious and, um, you know, palpable tightness in my chest and a real sense of hopelessness um, and, and stress because I'm thinking, what, what am I going to do? How am I going to get heat? I mean, it's okay now. It's it's September. I mean, it's a little bit chilly in the morning, but it's not freezing. But this is going to be really bad in the winter. Our cottage gets really bloody cold. And actually, when I really looked at what was making me anxious, of course, what I'm thinking about is where all of my teenagers are in the house and how each of their rooms are insulated quite differently. Some are better than others. And how each of my kids actually feel the, the cold differently. And... I'm really worrying about them being cold. I'm really worrying about it. I'm worrying about that far more than me being cold. And that sounds quite like superficial and pissy. As it, as it happens, I have come up with a workaround. Uh, and the, the, the solution I've come up with is that my electrician and plumber are going to rip this stupid bloody system out. Um, in the next couple of weeks, this newfangled IT thing that 50% of the time doesn't work, that my husband installed, um who isn't here a lot of the time to, to uh, and even he doesn't know what to do with it. And I'm going back to good old fashioned manual thermostats in different zones. That's what I'm doing so that between us, we can always fix it anyway. Um, but it really, really hit me um, because I thought to myself, there's a lot of time when, and stuff does go wrong a lot with the cottage. You know, the, the cottage is a bit of a, you know, I'm being trained to be a building maintenance person and I've got building work starting on Monday. And I'm like, why does it get me so stressed? The anxiety is really debilitating, really debilitating. Um, and the realisation hit me is because I'm really worried about how that is going to, um, how everybody in the house is going to cope with that, how it's going to impact everybody. That's really what is the heart of it. And if I extrapolate that out, excuse me while I just... Panda! We're not getting burgled. Um, when I extrapolate that out, that applies to so many things. It applies to um, the awareness and the engagement with all of my family and loved ones and the emotional load that I think in particular women carry um, in order to be able to um, support and care for our families in the way effectively we're biologically function we're biologically wired you know our estrogen biologically wires us for that right 
So it's it's a wonderful thing in that it keeps people safe and um, it gives us our maternal instinct and it can make us, you know, so wonderful at nurturing and caring as well as lots of other things because we are more than one thing. I mean, that's a whole other discussion, isn't it? We are so, and I think one of the big things that impacts my anxiety and mental well-being is if I get out of balance and I'm only allowed to be that one thing. I think that being, you know, that whole Gabor Mate, um, he does a whole chapter on how we reclaim and become our authentic selves. And that could be really, really difficult um, based on society's narrative and also the environment that we are born into and the challenges that we're faced with. So, um, and he also talks a lot about this emotional load. And I think there are many, many times that I have dismissed um, how I am feeling, my fatigue, my mental fatigue, my emotional fatigue, my stress level, my anxiety, my just general really being so fucking overwhelmed. And, and this week I have been really overwhelmed for two reasons. One is I haven't let's get fucking heating to work. Um, and secondly, I have a lot of building work starting on Monday uh, with some actually with some really great guys that I actually enjoy having around very much. But I've taken a far more active role in this work in terms of um, procuring a lot of the materials and organising a lot of the logistics. Um, why, you may ask? Well, one is it does have an impact on cost, which is a big deal because the cost of supplies has gone through the roof. But secondly, um, I think most importantly for me is I want to be educated. So when I have building work done to my house, I want to really understand what's happening. Because when everybody's gone at the end of the day, you know, this is my baby. I need to be able to make it work. And I know that not being able to make it work and things going wrong and not knowing what to do about them can can cause me debilitating anxiety because it's it's our cave it's my cave it's my home um and it is an old house and therefore it does have its challenges i have a very it's a paradoxical love hate relationship i have with my cottage i don't think i could live anywhere else um in any way shape or form but equally um it does present me with a lot of challenges and i do wonder if I have dismissed things as being, you know, low estrogen or feeling menopausal when really what's going on here is, I think, as a, you know, a, 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 the mother and the homemaker and, you know, a family of five, there's a lot of stuff that I see that I absorb that other, other people don't think about. And they're not bothered. The kids this morning when I'm talking to them about the work around and the heating palaver, they're, they're completely chilled. They're absolutely fine. They're not hassling me. They're just saying, oh, you know, whatever, we'll put a jumper on. You know, thanks for letting us know. It's me. It's me that's worrying about that. It's that nurturing. And actually, that is the estrogen in me that makes me the female. But I think just the very, for me, just being able to recognise that I do absorb an emotional load for other people and not just myself. Just being able to recognise that these things that, seemingly might look pissy on the surface actually have a much more deep rooted meaning i.e making our cave safe so that you know it's my reptile brain or whatever it is coming into play making my home safe so that my family can be nurtured and survive or that is really important to recognize that because effectively i'm validating myself and i'm saying it's okay and it's only, I think, when we're able to have that honest discussion with ourselves that we can say, right, what, what, what do you need? What do you need to be able to manage this and manage your own health? And part of being our authentic selves is being un unashamed and unembarrassed about those things. So it was OK for me this morning to, to ring my plumber and say, I'm in a bit of a tiz, actually. And, you know, he couldn't. He couldn't solve the IT issues with the Wi-Fi, but what he was able to do was talk to me and say, you know, should we think about a simpler system? You know, and because I was able um, to just name it. Actually, my yoga teacher uses that phrase a lot, naming it. And it's a really powerful thing is to name it, is to put it there in front of us and to name it and to say, I know the reason why am I feeling like this? I know what it is. I've, I'm picking up on some energy from somewhere else, from somebody else or my own anxiety. 
Where is the root cause? Where is the trigger? doesn't necessarily make that trigger or the root cause go away, but just naming it, recognising it, and allowing myself to have the honest conversation with myself about why that bothers me so helps enormously, absolutely enormously. That's it. That's just what I wanted to share. So I hope that helps. Lots of love.